I recently came across a 2006 white paper by Ken Schwaber, the creator of a Scrum framework. I believe this white paper might be the most important information created for the Scrum framework. Maybe even more important than the Scrum guide. <laughs> and funny enough, this white paper has been hidden for all these years. Well, it's publicly available, but it's the first time I see it and I make this type of content. No one talks about that. The information in this white paper is golden. So much value. And we are going to read together the 15 bullet points of this white paper in this video. By the end of this video, I guarantee that your knowledge of Scrum would have increased and you will know how to become more effective as a Scrum Master, an Agile coach, or even a team member or any member of an organization. If you're developing products, if you want to please your customer, if you want to provide value to your customer, you will be better off with these 15 bullet points. And remember, this was created in 2006, but still extremely relevant right now. Today, number one, Scrum is a framework for iterative incremental development using cross-functional self-managing teams. It is built on industry best practices, lean thinking and empirical process control. I found this one extremely boring. Let's skip this one, nothing new here. Number two, Scrum is optimized for high yield product management and product development. Scrum is particularly appropriate for high risk complex large projects and can be used when other parts of the endeavor are hardware or even waterfall development. What really stands out to me, complex, large projects. Scrum is perfect for that. And I really think that we need to read the next one. Point number three, if waterfall suits current needs, continue using it. That's point number three, extremely important. I see so many organizations do it or so many teams doing it. They are forced by management of their organization. You need to use Scrum. Yeah, you need to use Scrum. You need to use Agile. We are going full agility. <laughs> we are an Agile organization and we are forced to use Scrum when sometimes it doesn't make any sense. I see that also for user stories. Every piece of work is a user story when it doesn't make any sense. But that's for another video. Let's focus on Scrum right now. If you want to use Kanban, and if Kanban makes sense for you, especially if you're doing support activities, maybe maintenance, Scrum is not applicable. Why are you being forced to use Scrum? And going back to what point three mentioned, if your project, what you're developing right now, you started it waterfall, gathered all the requirements, and you have a pretty good idea of what needs to develop. Maybe you're upgrading an application, upgrading a server, you don't need to use any Agile frameworks to do that. Just use Waterfall. You know exactly what needs to do. There's low complexity. There's already a set deadline. Use Waterfall. Assign a project manager to it and go ahead. You don't need to use any Agile frameworks to do that. Number four, an enterprise can use Scrum as a tool to become the best product development and management organization in its market. Scrum will highlight every deficiency and impediment that the enterprise has so the enterprise can fix them and change into such an organization. Scrum doesn't fix issues. Agile doesn't fix issues. I always see in Scrum agility as the revealer. As Scrum Masters, Agile coaches, we are revealers. We help the team discover things <laughs> by slowing them down what they should be focusing on. We don't tell them, we help them discover. We facilitate this process. And when an organization just starts implementing agility or the Scrum framework, <laughs> they will see a lot of things don't make any sense. Just pop out into reality, become visible, become revealed. And then the organization has two options here. Either ignore these things, maybe if these things impact management. Oh, <laughs> Agile is not for management. Agile for the teams, let's ignore that. Oh, if they have the coverage, they should be fixing it. If they want the full benefits of Scrum, of agility, they should be fixing it. But it's hard in some organization. Number five, whenever an enterprise modifies only, partially implements Scrum, it is hiding or obscuring one or more dysfunctionalities that restrict its competence in product development and management. Know any Scrum teams that are unable they are unable to implement the Scrum framework as per the book. 
I tell you now, this is not applicable to us. We are hiding something. Let's take a simple example, a sprint goal. Many teams don't use a sprint goal. Many teams don't release an increment every single sprint. Something small at least, provide value to the customer, get feedback, test something, improve in the next sprint. Many teams tell you, ah, we release once every two months, once every three months. They are hiding something. What are they hiding? Eh, it's your role <laughs> to help them find this help. Number six, the iterative incremental nature of Scrum puts stress on the product development organization to improve its engineering skills and on the product management organization to optimize the return on investment of every release and project. The phrase that can be done here really means that it will be very difficult to do so. The gap between current practices and target practices is a measure of incompetence and competitive risk. Again, that can't be done here. Why? What are you hiding? You can't release early. We can't release frequently. Why? What are you hiding? Focusing on value. Focusing on incremental release. Focusing on releasing early. Getting fever from a customer. This makes people uncomfortable because we are not used to doing that, especially in management. Number seven, the use of Scrum to become an optimized product development and management organization is a change process that must be led from the top and requires change by everyone within the enterprise. Change is extremely difficult and fraught with conflict and may take many years of sustained effort. Turnover of staff and management can be expected. Everyone in the organization needs to change. But in reality, how is Agile implemented? How is Scrum implemented? Hmm, maybe only for technical teams, or even worse, only for the teams, not for management. The teams are Agile, but management, <laughs> they still require the teams to plan for one year, to commit on dates one year prior, and to make them abide to these dates. It doesn't make any sense. Number eight, the most serious impediments to using Scrum or habits of waterfall predictive thinking over the last 20, 30 years, this has spawned common and control management beliefs that demanding something will make it happen and the willingness of development to cut quality to meet dates. These are inbreed habits that we aren't even aware of anymore. We are not even aware of these habits. Management not even aware of these habits. We are not even aware of its habits. Demanding something will make it happen, focusing on unrealistic deadlines on planning, being rigid. This is not agile. Agile, remember, we are not preaching something only for the sake of preaching something. No, we have a customer in mind. And the core of agility is that we don't know. We don't assume. We don't know what the customer wants. If we know exactly what the customer wants, we have a sixth sense, so we know exactly what the customer wants. Everything will be perfect. The problem is that we don't know what the customer wants. So we release early, get feedback from the customer and improve on that feedback, improve the product, release again, improve the product, get feedback, goes on and on. Instead of developing for one year and releasing in one go. That's the whole mindset around agility and we apply that to everything we do and improvement we do in the team also. Early releases, experiment with this improvement, inspect, adapt, goes on and on like that. Number nine, the focus of using Scrum is the change from old habits to new ways of doing business. Scrum is not implemented or rolled out as a process. It is used to foment change, old habits to new ways of working, steer up the organization, change in these better ways of working, reveal things, reveal impediments, reveal anti-patterns, reveal biases in the organization. This is why you use Scrum. Number 10, Scrum is not a methodology but needs enhancing. That is how we got into trouble in the first place. Thinking that the problem was not having a perfect methodology. Effort centers on the changes in the enterprise that is needed. Again, it's not the framework. You can use anything and you should be using the best framework or methodology that suits your needs the best. The problem is not the framework. I work with many organizations. They're always looking for the best framework and they end up with safe. <laughs> we think of a framework is the problem. We need to be, bring an expert to teach you something new, a new framework, a new way of working. No, humans are interacting with, with each other. They are the problems. We need to reveal the problems. They have biases. 
They have old habits. They don't understand the goal. They have hidden agendas. Reveal that as a Scrum Master. Reveal all these things as an Agile coach. Number 11, iterative incremental development is much harder than waterfall development. Everything that was hard in waterfall engineering practices now has to be done every iteration. And this is incredibly hard, not impossible, incredibly hard to do. And why we do this? Because we want to release early, because we don't know what the customer wants. We have an idea of what the customer wants, but we need this feedback. We need to inspect and adapt consistently, continuously, every single sprint. Number 12, managing a release or project to deliver only the highest value functionality and not deliver the rest optimizes value and is the job of product management and customers. We have limited capacity, right? Developers are expensive. We need to focus on value. We need to focus on the highest priority and we need to focus on providing value to the customer. Not do something for some member of management who wants a bonus. Not do something that some member of management or some member of a team believe that the customer wants. No, ask them what they want and then you do it. Sometimes the customer doesn't know what they want. You release early, you test it, you inspect, you adapt. Number 13, self-managing teams are extremely productive when they work closely with a customer to derive the best solution to a need. They and the customer are even more productive. If you want more details on how to create, have an effective, efficient, self-managing team, watch this video right here. Number 14, a team consists of people under pressure to do their best. Conflict is natural and the team needs to know how to deal with the conflict and have resources to draw on when needed. If you want to know how to deal with conflicts in the team, watch this video right here. <laughs> and number 15, the last one, the role of an enterprise management changes from telling people what to do to leading and helping everyone do their best to achieve goals. People aren't resources and managers aren't bosses. People doing the work do better than you. A very long time ago, people doing the work were being told what to do by managers. And sometimes these managers don't even know how to do a job. <laughs> Who is the best to know how long a piece of work will take to be put in production? The person actually doing the job, but developers. That's why we ask them to estimate. That's why we ask them to self-manage. That's why we don't tell them what to do, because we don't know the person doing the work is the best person to tell you how long it will take and how to do it. To stop being the traditional manager or traditional boss. Instead, be a servant leader. Help them. Coach them, guide them, help them release their full potential. If you want more tips, insights on Agile, Scrum, personal growth, pick on the video that stands out the most on the screen right now. And I'll see you in a few seconds.